Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Shades here from RBT Entertainment, and welcome to something brand new. This is the RBT Game Crew. This planet Earth can be... Wait, that's not, not a good riff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, folks, uh, the Shades here along with Maddie J and TWK. Uh, we're going to be playing, as you see, we're playing Illusion of Gaia tonight. Well, you're playing it. We're just commenting. Oh, pretty much. Yes, we are doing a, live, a post commentary let's play in the style of guys like Brain Scratch Comms and Hellfire Comms, so big props to them. Uh, this game, of course, is a hidden gem made in 1994 by Quintet and Enix. Probably one of my favorite games of all time. I don't honestly know of very many games as awesome as this. It's, it's very Legend of Zelda esque, and the story is just beautiful. If you've seen stuff like. Um, Planet of the Grey Rolls video on it, and you know how awesome this game is. I was about, I was about, direction. To, say, I was about to say, Rue, sit down! <laughs> the one thing I will say is that the art direction and some in the main games sort of reminds me of Alundra a little bit. There's a, Yeah, there's definitely a lot of Alundra inspirations here, which is pretty cool. And of course, mode 7 graphics abound in this game. Yes, and it looks it does look quite amazing. Yeah, Enix and Quintet, and Quintet in particular, just loved them the Mode Seven graphics and Super Nintendo. So, and they definitely loved using it whatever they could. And this game is no, no, no exception to that. Did this come out before or after Final Fantasy VI? Oh my God, his forehead is speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I think this came out before six, actually. Um. It's it, it actually like for, for those who don't know, this is actually part of a series, a, a sub series, like a mini series of games that are loosely connected. The first of which is uh, Soul Blaze, Soul Blazer. Uh, then there's this game, and then there was Terra Enigma, which was actually never released in the states, which is quite unfortunate because uh, the one I played. Yeah, hmm? it's sad. By the way, it's the skull is right. Yeah, it was released in Europe, iron ironically. It was not released in the States. The States are the only place that didn't get it. Which is sad, too, because from what I've played, it's a fan It's even better than this. I'm sure. Has it at least gotten a virtual console release since then? No. Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. None to of the these, emulators. Yeah, none of these games have been released to the virtual console at all. Not, not even Illusion of Gaia? Not, not even Illusion. I don't think so. I'll have to double check, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, right there, Indiana Jones died. <laughs> As if the crystal skull thing wasn't obvious enough. Yeah, just be careful not to nuke the fridge. <laughs> the other interesting thing about the about the these three games, uh, and Illusion of Guy in particular, is the fact that these actually, you know, you see Planet Earth here, these actually involve real world settings. Uh, like you just saw there, that tower in the middle is actually the fabled Tower of Babel from, from uh, ancient history. And you, a lot of the places you go to explore that. So let's go ahead and get started on this here. Start journey now. <laughs> but which song? <laughs> Don't stop believing. <laughs> oh, and of course we start in school. Like any true Japanese setting. <laughs> now what what is going on here is we're playing Will. I want take a guess which one Will is. <laughs> Would he have to be the only one actually equipped with a weapon? <laughs> see, my, see, my money was on the purple girl over there, but... <laughs> That's actually a dude. That, yeah, that actually is a dude. Japan! <laughs> only in Japan. But, yeah, oh, and no game has more uh, androgynous characters than Diskeia, though. Oh, God, yeah, I've seen some of those characters. Anyway. Oh, wait, um, so his name is Seth. Yeah, yeah the purple Harlan, girl, the purple what are you hair? doing in there? <laughs> anyway... What is what has happened is Will's Will went with his father on an expedition to the Tower of Babel uh, a year or so ago, and unfortunately his 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 parent, his uh, dad got lost in the expedition along with many of their traveling companions. Uh, you'll see what that door is that that little door that popped up there is later. I didn't go into it now because it wasn't necessary. Um, also, if you check in here, you see I found a red jewel. There are fifty of those red jewels throughout the entire game. And, and if you find all fifty, all. and you, fi and Actually, you find all fifty, you can turn into John Hurt. <laughs> I've I seen what happens after you collect them all, and it's really only a bragging bonus more than anything. Well, no, no, actually, we'll get to. Well, I will be collecting all fifty jewels, and you're going to see how much of a bitch that is later. <laughs> oh Jesus! I've <laughs> seen what it takes to collect all fifty of those. You are in for hell, sir. Uh, not as much as it's not as bad as some games, but it can get a little tedious, especially with like one of the early jewels that you'll see later in this part alone. 
Uh, there's the second red jewel there underneath the stairs. Some of them are a little tedious to get to, but some of them are, you know, most for the most part, they're easy. And you do want to collect the jewels because even if you don't get all 50, if you get a certain amount, you'll get upgrades and stuff that are actually worth Get out of here! <laughs> yeah, th th this is Seth's house, the purple-haired dude. His parents are, are basically fighting with each other because the dad's basically uh, been wasting everyone's money. He's probably went to a whorehouse or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and the mom says that if it wasn't for the kids, she would have left him years ago. Oh! So, yes, great family. Going up That's the stairs. And that, I love the music in this game. I swear to God, this is fantastic music. What do you oh, think? Jump down. Up. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, Brandon, why'd you John? fall? And of course, he Brandon. lands like Superman, like a boss. Hey, and, she, and funny that she'll only walk to that if you jump off that cliff. Otherwise, she'll just stand over there. By the way, this is the guy you go to. This is one of the guys you'll talk to to deliver the jewels. Um, and you can hey. see here. So early on, you get a little, you know, a couple of things, but later on, you'll get some upgrades to your attacks that are actually very useful. So there's one in particular that you'll use for something I'll show later in the second part. But this guy get that, that upgrade gets powerful. No, nope, remember that fisherman. I'll be getting to him later. Hmm. Oh yes, he's one of the more annoying little things you have to do. Yeah, now it's we're part of that. Yeah, now we're heading on to the uh, to the hidden bit to our basically our little playground. Or basically, I guess you could say our cave house. Um, this is a little like home away from home for the kids to hang out after school. Hey, look, kids! There, it's DX playing strip, strip poker. Oh, Shawn Michaels! I uh, and no wonder you know uh, DX. Oh, Shawn Michaels is gone. You don't want to see his wang again. <laughs> oh. Oh yes, the princess has arrived. <laughs> yeah. By the way, take a look at Seth's face right there. That I don't. I can never. I can never stop looking at that face and laughing because it looks so ridiculous like that. Is he supposed to have a pier? Is he supposed to have like a nose ring? I have no idea. It looks like a mouse face, really, when you look at it. Maybe it looks normal from the side view. Looks like yeah, it looks, looks, like, looks, looks like a Muppet from Matt Fraggle Rock or something. I know, right? <laughs> Why does his face look nor so normal from the side, but when he's facing the camera, it just looks like one of those faces that just looks like they got melted. Like yeah. you take one of those action figures, you melt them in the salt the magnifying glass. That's what you got. Yeah, oh, by the way, oh, by the way, Will melt. has psychic powers. Boom. <laughs> He moved the statue with his mind. One the boy. Was, what is well, was, the secret of your style. power? Right, here's the other thing. Okay, little tri little tip, little note for you guys. He asks you to pick the card and find the Ace of Diamonds. Does not matter what card you pick. You will always get the Ace of Diamonds. It, yeah, it certainly looks like that. No, it, it, you can pick any card you want. You can like. Pull up an emulator, save state, pick any of the four cards. It will always be the Ace of Diamonds. Period. They're they're all the Ace of Diamonds. Ladies and gentlemen, game, this game is a winner. rigged. Rigged, yeah. I tell you, man. It's, like, <laughs> it's a it's a reverse carnival game. Okay, now here's the thing. You'll see it's evening time now. Now I'm going to show you this. You see, when you come outside, you'll note that the fisherman has moved. Here's the thing. He moves to one of three random spots. And you're gonna, and you want him to show up at the third spot. And it took me two minutes of entering next to the door until finally he shows up here. Now you see you've got a pot. Guess what happens when you check the pot? You get a red jewel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fish are biting up there today. Yeah, you check the pot, and sure enough, there is a red jewel inside. But one detail I noticed that is they actually have his hair waving in the wind. I know it, that actually that actually is you actually use that at one point in the game when you're when you're doing through a cave and you're trying to find like a secret entrance. You actually have to watch for your hair to blow. You'll see that later on. Wow, that's quite interesting. Yeah, they they, they did not skimp on anything in this. Oh, hey, pig! Who wants bacon? Bacon! I want bacon! I want bacon! Bacon, sir! I want bacon! Bacon, bacon, bacon! It's bacon! I gotta just wait to find out what the yeah, pig's right name is. It's it's so just face palm. Yeah. Pun. Oh, hello. Hamlet. Hamlet. The Angel pun. The pun. The, so many puns. Pun. Hamlet. Hey, you want some bacon? I got some bacon. Bacon. To eat or not to eat? That is the question. Boom. <laughs> Oh, you were thinking it. Hey, hey, you you be careful because some someday you're gonna you might get fried like bacon. No, oh! that was bad, and you should feel bad. You should feel bad for not thinking it. 
<laughs> anyway, yeah. Yeah. Thank God they did not actually have, like, show it, like, playing music of the parents singing, or the grandparents singing, because I think we'd probably be, it'd probably be screechy and annoying. They, they, they kind of saved us from that disaster. Though we do technically get to hear them singing, but it's just sort of a MIDI. No, you don't even hear that. that. That's just the background music. You oh. never hear them sing. Well, you hear Grandma Lola singing later, but that's that's actually important. But like, you don't hear them singing this, which is probably the best. Uh oh. There seems to be a commotion downstairs. Hello. Uh, it's. Oh God! It's the King Slayer. Run! He'll stab you in the knee and make a bad Skyrim joke or something. <laughs> No, it's a, it, it, it's the uh, it's the uh, English Inquisition. Nobody expects them. <laughs> and of course, this is when he, she reveals that yeah, she's actually the princess. Yeah, quick shock. And apparently, the pig is her pet. I'm sure that won't have any plot relevance later. Oh yeah. By the way, guess what Grandma's uh, specialty is here? Making pies. Yeah, what, what kind of pie is the scary part? Snail pie. Why snail? I, you're because asking the wrong guy. French? I don't know. But I'll admit, I've had escargot. It's actually pretty good. Interesting. <laughs> By the way, for the sake of the fact that they're finally eating pie, insert supernatural reference here. Yes, yeah, so here we go. Snail pie with whipped cream. And apparently, yep, and apparently it's so good that Grandpa eats half of it. Yeah, scary. And of course, he he, he dreams of, the, of going around the world with a girl he just met today. Plot been... point. <laughs> and he had more pie for breakfast. I well, get, but it's probably the only thing they had to eat. At least that's what I assume. Oh, here we go. Here's the only instance of Grandma Lola singing. Oh, she looks pretty young to be a grandma. Well, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell from these shots here, but she, when you, when you put it in context and everything, she does look like she could be a little elderly as opposed to Will and, you know, put it next to Grandpa there. Well, Grandpa definitely looks so old. Mm -hmm. And yes, have... actually learned to play the song. And yes, that is irrelevant to the plot later. Insert Ocarina of Time song learning tune here. <laughs> yeah, taking place before Ocarina of Time, not ironically. And today is the 15 year anniversary. Oh, even more ironic. All right, so now that we've got the, you know, we couldn't leave the town until just now. So that's the end of part one. To part two, we're gonna be heading off to the castle and finding out what that what the king wants, and even though we don't have any crystal rings. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye guys!